Hello, Brad here, just to say we're super proud that the Friday 5pm podcast is sponsored by the Malt Miller, the UK's best home brew store. We use the Malt Miller for all of our homebrew experiments, as well as tapping them up for advice and binging on their awesome YouTube channel all the time. That's why whenever we release a homebrew video, we put a recipe kit live on the Malt Miller, so you can brew with the exact same amazing ingredients that we did. The same ingredients used by pro brewers. So alongside the Malt Miller's nitro flushed hops, cold stored yeast and milled to order malts, you can pick up recipe kits for our Five Points Best Bitter, Russian River West Coast IPA and now the fastest beer in the world, a hazy session IPA that goes from grain to glass in less than 48 hours. Sign up to their newsletter at tinyurl.com forward slash Malt Miller to get 5% off your first order. With the Malt Miller's amazing customer service and Johnny's 48 hour recipe, You could order the ingredients on a Monday and be drinking the beer by the weekend. Speaking of which, it's Friday. It's 5pm. So enjoy this week's Friday 5pm podcast. Hey beer geeks and welcome to another edition of the Lockdown Friday 5pm podcast. We picked a really bad time to launch this given that the (laughs) idea was you'd listen to it on your way back from work. (laughs) Yeah, it didn't really work out how we were intending, did it, Johnny? But um, no. I, I tell you what, in my isolation, I'm bloody looking forward to recording these every week. It's lovely to hear your voice on the other end of oh, the, thanks, of the line, mate. It really is. Hopefully the listeners feel the same. Oh, I hope so. <laughs> um, yeah, we still think it's just about working. If you guys have suggestions about what we could do with this podcast, do let us know. Uh, but we're just going to plough on talking about our exceptionally dull lives um, <laughs> and what video we managed to cobble together from isolation each week. Um, before we get on to that, Brad, what have you been drinking this week? This week, I've mostly been incredibly anxious, so I've been trying not to drink that much. Um, Is that the name of a beer, incredibly anxious? <laughs> if it isn't already, it might be by the end of this. <laughs> it's um, going to be your homebrew. Yeah, yeah. I, I haven't really been drinking that much. My girlfriend's just been uh sort of worrying to me the last day or so that we haven't got a lot of beer in the house and that we need to try and get hold of some nice beer so um i've got to i gotta try and find the best way of getting decent beer johnny i don't really want to leave my house i'm i'm quite i'm quite scared of of giving it to somebody or or getting it from somebody so um I'm 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 really abiding by these these draconian rules at the moment. Um, but you're 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 over abiding by them. You're 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 supposed to go out and do uh, a day's exercise, or else you'll you'll die of obesity before the Rona gets you. I mean, I might do. I've definitely I've definitely plumpened somewhat since last you saw my face. <laughs> um, I've I've got a bit more rotund. I, it's it's not good, is it? Staying in all day because you just sort of you know what have you got to look forward to? You kind of food um i'd stopped eating biscuits for a, at least a year and i lost a lot of weight i lost about three stone from not eating biscuits Wait, and... you were eating three stones worth of biscuits <laughs> i don't know man i don't know i lost like three stone uh when i when i made a concerted effort to lose weight um and some of it's definitely slid back on but anyway biscuits are back in the house now because they're kind of helping me fight my um mild depression i would say and I've, i get a very bad anxiety i take medication for anxiety all the time so um but but you know. beer beer has been replaced by biscuits that's what you're well, saying th- this week it has because I, I just i don't know i just had a bit of a weird wobble this week um it's kind of got to me a little bit this week but i want to get back into my routine of, of, of drinking some uh some lovely lovely brewskis so I don't know, man. Where are you buying your beers right now? I know we were talking about, you know, the need to support independent. Um, and, you know, I know a lot of people are in, in, in lots of small breweries and um, bottle shops are, are kind of having to restructure their business to be a more um, internet savvy approach and, and a delivery service. So, I, Well, yeah, it's not it's not even internet savvy. It's just literally delivery. having a web shop, which... Yeah. Um, hundreds have launched in the last couple of weeks um and i've I've helped a couple of them set up giving giving advice um nice. and i've been buying from lots of them so i've bought from signature brew i've bought from pressure drop 
I bought from my local bottle shop who are doing deliveries, which is Caps and Taps. I'm sure your local be uh, bottle shop will be doing deliveries, Brad. So if you really don't want to leave the house, and I do recommend that you do at some point because that might be contributing <laughs> yeah. to your anxiety and depression. Yes, yes. Uh, but if you don't want to for beer, and that probably doesn't count as a necessary journey, mm. um, most bottle shops and breweries uh, in the UK and even in the States where the laws are super tight around uh, delivery of beer, uh, online sales of alcohol. Uh, even in the States, loads and loads of online retailers have sprung up. Um, so that's how I'm getting all of mine. I, I put an order in an hour ago because we, we, I've been getting my adjustments wrong. So we got into lockdown and I was like, oh my God, we haven't got any Pilsners or Hellas. So I put in a big order for a case of lager and now we've drunk all of the, nearly all of that and all of our IPA. So now we've got no IPA. Okay. We're running out of lager. Oh, so no. I did my IPA order this the, this week uh, and I'll have to do a lager order next week. And in the meantime, I'm slowly running down my barley wine, imperial stout and mixed fermentation stash as we've been showing uh, on the channel. Yeah. I mean, I've got, uh, I've got one ice block in the fridge. I drank my last the two Pilsners this week. Um, Sad where, times. Where did you get your lager from? Uh, I got that from uh, the sponsor of our podcast, Beer Merchants. Did you? What did you get? Um, I got a bunch of Paulana, Lost and Grounded Keller Pills, mm. and Hackershaw Keller Beer, which is mm. a hazy, unfiltered German lager. I mean, now that this glorious weather's here, all I want to do is drink lager. So I kind of need to make that happen. I might go, I might go on Beer Merchants thinking about it. Do you think they'll deliver to South London? Yeah, they they deliver to all of Europe, buddy. <laughs> okay, but <laughs> I, I need it now, I Johnny. South London still I'm very counts. anxious. <laughs> south London, anywhere south of the river is normally doesn't count. Doesn't count. Well, so they'll deliver to Germany, but not to uh, south, south of the south river. South of the river, mate. You having a laugh? <laughs> um, yeah, they'll definitely deliver that to you. Don't worry about it. Um, I have an admission to make, which is that uh, we did get sent some uh, corporate shill beer. Um, Asahi sent me some Pilsner Raquel because they know that we love it. And, of uh. course, I can't share that with you. Oh. Um, oh, that so makes me I've, very been, sad. I've been thoroughly enjoying some non-independent Pilsner yeah. Raquel. God damn. Um, but I'm nearly out of it as well, so I'm nearly in the same position as you again. Uh, okay. Um, anyway, should we talk about this week's video? <laughs> yeah, man. I'm, first of all, congrats because it was friggin' awesome. Uh, Thanks, man. I was gutted I couldn't be in it. This this doing the craft beer channel helps keep me sane a little bit. I mean, it it really does. Uh, so you know, I was just felt very not envious. It's not the right word, but I just I was just like, oh man, I wish I was there drinking that with you, um, and and experiencing that and and getting to talk to that guy about that amazing yeah, to beer. Chat to John yeah. Keeling was great. Yeah, I've chatted to him a couple of times, but never really had his undivided attention and his tales. Mm. Um, directed at me so it was really good and we like i only used uh probably a third of that chat that we had uh the other two thirds is going to go into our video for next week um but yeah talking about this week's video so i was tasting um the 2010 vintage of fuller's vintage ale so it's a an 8.5 percent barley wine um that they release every single year um in increasingly large volumes it used to be very small volumes and now it's it's a lot of beer hundreds of thousands of bottles but still um a very very special beer and this is one that had been in my stash for a couple of years and i bought it around about 2015 i think um but yeah it's a 10 year old bottle of beer and it was tasting absolutely stellar i won't spoil all the wonderful tasting notes yeah. here you should watch the video which is in the descriptions of this podcast but very very special beer it was interesting to just know uh well to get a bit of of an understanding on how they chose the ingredients that went into those and and how that how that changed over the course of the years that they were doing it so at one point it was i don't want to spoil the video but it was because there were competitions about ingredients that went into to beer and yeah so there used to be annual competitions every hop harvest um and every year they do like the competitions for the the best malt and the best hops um which i i, I guess probably stopped because there were so few producers of, of British hops yeah. um, by sort of the, the, the late 2000s, um, probably even a little bit earlier. Um, but now they do. Uh, there are competitions again now, I think, because we, we are getting more and more producers of hops. 
Um, so maybe they can start using the award-winning ones again. Uh, so they've gone full circle. Yeah, man. It's, it's, it's really interesting stuff. Um, yeah, and John is a, a, a legend and a man who knows how to spin a yarn. Like uh, I know he was uh, he was ridiculing the marketing team and saying it was the only good idea they'd ever really come <laughs> up with in his time. Um, but he'd have made a great marketing man himself, John. He, he knows how to make a, a story interesting, which is basically marketing. Or maybe it's PR, one of the two. Mm. Yeah, it was wonderful stuff. Um, yeah. Um, and so off the back of that video and the video before where we've been talking about these aged beers as, we, as we've been drinking through uh, my hashtag beer stash, uh, we're still using that, that hashtag. So please do, if you want to show off your beer stash or something you drank, use that and tag us. Um, yeah, we were being asked by people how to start a beer stash, how to store beer if you're going to age it, what beers will work and what beers won't work to age. So we've decided that next week's video will be an investigation into that. Um, so we, me and Brad just spent a, a confusing, happy and sometimes frustrating hour going through Brad's <laughs> graveyard of beers oh <laughs> um, that he forgot about. Um, there's some pretty special stuff in there, uh, some of which might have aged very nicely and some of which won't. Um, and we're going to put that with my stash and come up with a video explaining the best ways to uh, to gather your beer stash. And the worst the ways. <laughs> and the worst ways, which is Brad's way, which is put beer in cupboard, forget beer or indeed cupboard exists. Oh, God, yeah. Um, so that will be a lot of fun and hopefully very educational. Um, and John Keeling, so that other half of that interview that I did, we're going to show you that where he talks about the science behind uh, beer aging. And it's even more interesting, uh, believe me, than, than what we put in the video this week. Great stuff. Um, yeah, so my, my favourite comment on that video uh, was from a chap called Leo, um, who said he'd love us to do a video on how to get your hands on rare or different beers. It'd be interesting to people like me that just buy whatever's in the supermarket or my local bottle shop. Mm. Um, and this was something Brad and I were also discussing, like these, um, well, I mean, the simple answer is go on the internet, right? That That's where so much great beer is to be found. Um, and pretty much all the rare beers you could possibly imagine will be on a website somewhere in the UK or, and I'm not condoning this, uh, you can get them on the secondhand grey market from some bastard who's trying to extort you. Mm. Um, but there are lots of cool places you can go and get uh, different vintages of stuff um, that you might not expect. So the most famous example is there's um, a bar that only opens on a Sunday in the middle of the Bajotan land in the middle of all these Lambic breweries where you can go and um, try all kinds of different vintages. And apparently it's a very welcoming place. I've never actually been in that area of the world on a Sunday, so I've never been able to go. But I hear it's amazing. I forget the name of it, but um, I will dig it out and put it in the show notes. You've forgotten the Bajotan bar. The, I, 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 can, I can remember Bajotan land, but not what the bar is. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's also... Uh, so if you go to Lowlander, which... Is a big uh, Belgian bar in Covent Garden, not the kind of place you'd expect to see amazing beer, but their tap list is awesome. And if you ask for like the hidden list, they've got mega blends and old Cantillons and all kinds of stuff in the cellar downstairs. Yeah, their cellar's insane. Um, yeah, and if you seem excited about it, I'm sure they would uh, dig out something special for you. Um, so I'd love to know your tips, guys, uh, and we'll put it um, in the show notes or in reply to Leo on that video of where you get where you found amazing rare stuff or people that are super passionate and willing to, to bring out something from the, uh, from the archives for people to buy or to drink there. Because, you know, these places are really hard to find and often if you find them, you can be there and have no idea. And also, I think if you find them, you're not really inclined to share them. So... Is that a veiled <laughs> dig at me waiting for... No, 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 no. my beer stash. No, 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 yeah. no, no, no. no. I meant uh, if if you if you find these places, you know the guy who's got something hidden behind his counter, who gives you a wink. You're not gonna necessarily go out and tell all your your beer mates where you got that from. Um, I think if the barman's giving you a cheeky wink, it, he's probably uh, not going to be going downstairs. Uh, in a <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't. Sense. I wouldn't follow him after. <laughs> I wouldn't go with him if he asked me in the cellar necessarily. Uh, yes. We'd have to we'd have to establish some some ground rules before some I boundaries entered yeah. some subterranean uh, dungeon with the man. 
what Brad will and won't <laughs> tolerate while finding that cancer. This is my safe word. <laughs> oh dear, that got derailed. I apologise. <laughs> Yes. Um, so yeah, we'd love to know what cool places you would go to find some some rare stuff. Um, my flat is one place, but probably not by the end of quarantine. I think it'll all be gone. Yeah, man, you've raided it. You've raided the store yeah. cabinets. I've, I've been raiding it pretty, pretty, pretty hard. hard. Although it is all pretty high ABV, so I am drinking fairly responsibly. Mm. Um, <laughs> or trying to, uh, trying, oh, trying. You're you're going out for a, a jog, right? After this, so you're keeping trim. Which is good. I'm keep. I'm keeping. Do you know what? I think I've lost weight as a result of this because you know, I'm thought, so I desperate looked, to get out of the house. Yeah. I look. Look at your face earlier. I. I said we hadn't seen each other's face. That was a lie. We were on video call a little while ago. Um. And you did look skinnier. Your face looks very, very svelte, Johnny. Um, is that right? Well, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. I could. You know, your cheekbones were looking good, mate. Uh. I kept looking <laughs> back at myself, thinking, Oh my god, this. What's What's happened? What's happened to me? Like in biscuits, that's what's happened. So the biscuits uh, happened, yeah. yeah. Well, beer beer's happening to me, so it's not going to last for a long time. Mm. Um, and even if I do lose weight, I'll still be as ruddy as I always appear on camera. It's good day. It's, it's always good. It, it, it it nothing does uh, less for my self esteem than when I'm doing the color balancing on the videos <laughs> and I'm whacking up the saturation as far as I can. <laughs> and literally, the place I have to stop is when I start looking ruddy. Oh, so dear. every video we've done is is only as colourful as my cheeks can allow. <laughs> you are the you're the temperature chart for the uh, for the rest of the screen. That's great. Yeah, yeah. I am. Oh dear. Um, right. So now we've humbled ourselves uh, sufficiently. Um, we're we're on to the, into the end of the the podcast. These twenty minutes fly by, Brad. They do, don't uh, they? For it's... us, at the very least, it could oh, be torture for the people great. listening. No, I'm sure um, people are loving it. I mean, they've got fuck all else. To everyone do, else so. is getting fat too, right? I mean, you know, unless they're doing the Joe, I might have to start doing the bloody Joe Wicks thing or something. I if need you to do, do something. Film it. That's going straight on the channel. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Maybe a couple of weeks into it, when I'm looking more uh, rock rock solid, then maybe. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll let you do a couple of yeah. sessions to get yeah, yeah. get get in the swing of it, and then get start filming it. it. Yeah. I want to see you doing dumbbell weights with like seven fifty mil barley wines. That's oh yeah. That's my kind of workout video. <laughs> yeah. Um, right. So uh, the big news we have to announce before we go is that next week, so in five days' time, is it five days to Wednesday? Right. Four or five days. Yeah. Uh, we'll be doing another live show. So what day are we doing the live show on, Johnny? Just <laughs> We're doing that. it on Wednesday. On Wednesday. Wednesday. Next Wednesday. Uh, 15th of April, day before my birthday. Oh, man. I know, I've got a quarantine birthday as well. Um, yeah, 15th of April at 8pm on our YouTube channel. We think we've sorted the technical difficulties. That's why Brad and I were on a video call earlier. Mm. Uh, so it should be smoother. Uh, we're going to do some of the bits we didn't get to do with our last one because of the technical issues. And we are going to run another pub quiz, possibly without a music round. I think we're, we're definitely doing it without a music round. We yeah, lost so that, that many people when I piped up and started my terrible rendition of, uh, well, everything. Basically, everything I did was awful. Um, <laughs> not Johnny, true. you're very musical. Um, so, you know, I, you're not getting any of the blame. It was it was all me. <laughs> um, well, yes. I don't think you lost all 60 viewers. Some of them must have been me. Um, but that's how many we lost in about 30 seconds. So no music round, but we'll still we'll bring back our other favourite rounds, like the guess which one of these is a real beer name. Um, that was a lot of fun. And we'll come up with some more hilarious, uh, or hilarious to us, uh, true or falses. I think some more, ce- cele- I want a celebrity charity name round, like the Kevin Bacon. I like the Kevin Bacon one. We should definitely do that. Um, I like yeah. that. Yeah, yeah we'll like think up, think up some more of those. Yeah, because um, everyone's starting charities right now. Anyway, it's topical. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, so yeah, the poll quiz will start at eight thirty. The live stream at eight. It will go on till around about ten p.m. Depending on how much we have to stop for technical issues. Um, and we'd love you guys to join us to get involved because it was a lot of fun, even if it was a lot of stress as well. Um, other news is uh, I was on the Cabin Fever podcast, which came out yesterday. Uh, so that is with the awesome uh, Owen of um, uh, Beer City Brussels. 
Uh, he's a great beer writer uh, and he's launched a podcast uh, where people in the beer industry are venting, talking about the issues, talking about life. Um, and that was lots and lots of fun. So I was on that. Nice. And we were also on the Beer Fridge podcast oh, last week. Yeah, absolutely smashing is, uh, the podcasts. I'm loving the podcast. I mean, every, if every white middle-aged guy didn't have a podcast before <laughs> COVID, they certainly fucking do now. <laughs> So what's so the, the cabin fever? Was that name already cabin fever before this situation? No, that is a brand new podcast. Okay, right, cool. Specifically for for this moment in human history. Right, that's interesting. Um, yeah, that would have been too perfect. Yeah, so yeah, that and the beer fridge podcast in which we had a, a nice long chat. Uh, I think I got a bit controversial at a couple of points, but that that seems to happen. If you guys follow at Johnny Garrett on Twitter, it's a very different vibe to following at Beer Channel. Um, a lot more politics and, and hatred yes um and that, that's why i'm not anxious because i just put it all on twitter and feel a bit better ah so you got to get it out somehow that's the way to do it man um yeah so that that's all the news so do please join our live show uh please do check out our video this week uh, which is in the show notes all about fuller's vintage ale 2010 um and we'll see you next wednesday afternoon for our video on how to store age and pick Beers for celery. Ooh, yeah. The Bubble Podcast is brought to you by the nerds behind YouTube's Craft Beer Channel. Head to youtube.com slash the Craft Beer Channel to watch this week's video and over 400 more exciting episodes. If you love what we do, please, please, please do subscribe and even join our Patreon at patreon.com slash craft beer channel. Love and beer. Oh.